But from there, it's a lot of speed stuff. So we'll do speed drills where whether it's reactive um, type things in the gym or um, ladder drills or different sprints, things like that, um, that are just working on speed. And if you saw it, you'd be like, are these kids training for basketball? Are they training for football, like, you know, golf, what is it? But it's re just really learning how to move fast. Um, because that's what, with golf, like the golf club doesn't weigh very much, right? So it's not like you need a lot of like strength to actually move it, you just need speed. And so doing kind of that speed stuff certainly helps um, in the gym, but then having that strength foundation so that you can actually handle it. Hello and welcome to another episode of Making the Turn. I'm your host, Vince Drummond. Really excited to talk all things junior golf fitness today with our guest, Lindsay Becker. Lindsay is a doctor of physical therapy and a TPI certified golf fitness trainer. She is the owner of Buckeye Golf Performance, as well as the head trainer and physical therapist at the Golf Room in Dublin, Ohio. Lindsay also spends time working with clients at Muirfield Village, the prestigious golf course in Dublin that hosts the Memorial Tournament every year. Lindsay does a really good job of breaking down junior golf fitness today, and she also tells us some really cool stories about her experiences with professional golfers and some of the things that she's been able to do with them. So really fun episode, really exciting episode. Before we get started, just want to thank you guys so much for the support lately. It's been overwhelming. Uh, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. We'll get you all things related to golf here at Vince Drum and Golf and Making the Turn. Uh, with that, I want to get right into the episode. This is episode eight of Making the Turn, Golf Fitness for Juniors. Hats forward, headphones on, let's go! all right welcome back to the making the turn podcast i'm your host vince drummond uh really excited to be joined today by lindsey becker lindsey is a top 50 golf instructor by golf digest uh, also is doing some really cool things over in the dublin ohio area so thank you so much for joining us today lindsey Awesome. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited. Of course, of course. We're excited too. I'm excited to learn all about training junior golf. So why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about you, about your story, uh, kind of how you wound up working in fitness and then with golfers in general. Yeah. So, um, so my background is I'm a physical therapist. Um, I always knew I wanted to do physical therapy. Um, and my first job um, out of PT school was in Gainesville, Florida. Um, and I grew up as a runner more so. Um, I played golf, but I was more, definitely more of a competitive runner. Um, and so that was where I thought I would like kind of um, be of like working with runners. And I found out very quickly that working with runners like sucks. Like, they <laughs> just don't listen to a thing that you say. Like they would be like, you know, yeah, my knee hurts. I'm like, yeah, you might want to take, you know, a little time off. And they're like, yeah, I think I only might do eight miles today. And you're like, oh, what is our purpose here? Um, and so it was at that time when I was in Florida, we were seeing a lot of golfers um, just since it was Florida. And I learned about the TPI program. And I just was like, this makes a lot of sense. This is really cool. I don't know anyone that's doing this. Um, and so I just kind of got more involved with golf from there. Um, so I was in Florida for three years, then I came back to Ohio, um, worked at Ohio State in sports medicine for five years, and was working with the golf program there as well as just kind of um, the like general population, college students, all that fun stuff, worked with the call, um, Ohio State golf teams. Um, and that was more from like the rehab standpoint. Um, and then in 2014, um, I, end of 2014, I left Ohio State um, and went off on my own. And um, so at that time, so Kyle Morris, who he owns the golf room, he was one of my clients. Um, he played professionally. Um, and so I was training him and kind of working with him. And it was about a year after that, 2015, um, that he was kind of like, you know what, I'm done playing professionally. Uh, and I'm going to start teaching. And, you know, when I, when he was playing as a professional, he had a team around him. He had his different swing coaches, putting coach, mental coach, strength coach, you know, obviously. And he was like, I want to have my players have the same um, benefit for that. And so we opened up a facility where you kind of have all those disciplines under one roof. So um, here at the golf room, we've got um, we've got six hitting bays and, um, two, well now three, um, golf pros, 
Um, so doing lessons, you can come and hit. We've got the gym and the rehab. Um, and then we've got a sports psychologist doing the mental performance. And so that was really, and it was kind of interesting because that's what TPI kind of talks about is their model of like having a team. And, but as we kind of talk, you know, to people around the country, they say very few people are actually putting it all together, like under one roof. Um, and so I guess it's kind of novel, like what we did. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, and so in that we're seeing, I'm still doing the rehab and, um, you know, the, you know, therapy, but then also a lot of strength and conditioning as well. And a lot of juniors, <laughs> as you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, that's awesome. One of the things that, that we've talked about a lot to all of our guests is just that team approach when we get the chance to talk to some elite level players, whether they be high level amateurs or professional players, we always ask them kind of about that team feel and that team environment kind of piggybacking off of the golf room getting a little bit into kind of what we're here to talk about, which is the junior stuff. Um, I know you guys are running a pretty serious elite junior program over there doing a lot of things with a pretty big yeah. group of golfers who are looking to kind of take their golf performance to the next level. So talk a little bit about that program, how it kind of, how it kind of came about and then some of the things that, that those athletes are doing kind of on a weekly basis. Yeah. So when we, um, when we first started um, this golf room, we realized that there was definitely a market for um, one for juniors, but that, you know, a lot of them, they didn't really know how to practice. They didn't have a lot of structure um, in terms of their workouts, in terms of their practice, um, things like that. And so particularly during the winter months, we're like, we want to be able to give them something that's, um, you know, a tour level, tour quality level of, um, you know, experience with that. And so I think our first academy, the first year we did it, we may have had 12 kids. Um, and this year we're up to, so it's high school kids, um, you know, freshmen through seniors. I think we have 26 kids. Um, and they basically come four days a week, Monday through Thursday. Um, they're there basically after school. So around three o'clock till six o'clock, two days a week, they're working out with um, me uh, in the gym doing golf fitness stuff and just kind of general strength and conditioning. Um, two days a week, they have specific um, designated times um, with Kyle and then they're doing, they have all these mental drills um, as well. And so when they're not actually in their hour of like fitness, they have different um, drills or exercises or things that they're doing on their own that they kind of know how to do. So um, the program runs from um, mid-November to mid-May. So it's a six month program um, and it's intense for sure. But I mean, you're really learning just kind of everything that you would and that you would need for golf. Um, I mean, they have homework where they're looking at, um, you know, how does wind affect ball flight and um, you know, what club would you use with this when there's this much wind and it's an uphill green or, you know, whatever it may be, there's a lot of different homework with that. Um, so they're learning a lot for sure in that six months. <laughs> And it's cool to see the kids as we've seen them, like a couple of them have come, um, you know, this is their second or third year in the academy and to see their growth with it and to see, um, you know, how all of a sudden they're starting to mentor even the younger kids, you know, and they become kind of coaches themselves, which is really cool. Yeah, that's really awesome. Um, getting a little bit more specifically into the fitness side of things. Uh, obviously, as we've talked about, yeah. you're working with quite a few juniors. Uh, talk about what kind of goes into building a junior's training protocol as compared to maybe somebody else who's a little bit older, a little bit more mature and developed? How do those things differ? What kind of goes into building a, a good junior training protocol? Yeah, so we first start with um, an assessment for sure of all of our kids. Um, and we use the TPI model. So looking at just kind of their basic movements and range of motion, flexibility, um, and then looking at some power numbers, their grip strength, um, some different, you know, vertical jump and ball throws, um, their plank times, all that fun stuff. Um, you know, what's interesting with the juniors is, um, you know, they, they definitely all need to get stronger, right? So that's kind of a theme um, with that. And so from a general strength and conditioning, they definitely need to learn that. But they, most of them don't know just even the basics. And so before you can even like, just like how you would teach a golf swing of like, you've got to learn how to grip the club. You've got to learn how to, you know, have a good posture. They need the same thing for, for strength and conditioning. So they need to learn how to hip hinge. Um, not just for like deadlifts, but also for golf. Um, they need to learn that. They need to learn good squat mechanics. They need to learn, you know, how to actually rotate. You know, there's um, 
you know, balance all that fun stuff. And so before you really start loading them too much, you know, you've got to um, kind of set that foundation. And so making sure they have that. And then there's different kind of windows depending on where they are in their development. So we've got a lot of freshman boys who they're going through big, big growth spurts right now. Um, and so when, I mean, we had one kid, he's great grown nine inches in the past six months, like crazy. Oh, wow. And so what you see with that is that they're, yeah, like it's a whole lot. So the, their coordination isn't great at that time. Cause they're just learning how to use like their limbs, you know, and they're that much longer. Um, so that's the time, like you don't really want to like load them too much, right. Or try to do like really complex movements. It's like, let's work on like some of your speed stuff and keep working on your flexibility. Um, cause those are the boys that we'll see that like now they can't touch their toes all of a sudden, and that can really affect their golf swing and being able to stay in posture, but realizing like how that's going to affect them. Um, so part of it's kind of knowing where they are in the development of like, you know, kind of um, trying to personalize that strength and conditioning to them. Um, but yeah, we're working, you know, kind of all, you know, legs, arms, a lot of rotational patterns um, and beyond just kind of that foundation of strength. Then we do a lot of, you know, these are movements that are in, in the gym that could, that relate um, directly to your golf swing. So a lot of times what we'll see with the juniors is like, you know, they'll have drills that they're working on with, um, with Kyle or with their golf pro. But like when you actually get a club in their hand, they just want to swing full bore. Right. And all of those kind of mo uh, motor patterns and movements just kind of go out the window. And so it's like, all right, let's take away the club. Let's take away looking at ball flight and all that fun stuff. And let's get in the gym and work on those same movement patterns. So maybe it's loading into your, you know, right heel or um, really loading onto your right side in the backswing. How can we do that with a medicine ball? Or how can we work on um, your, you know, staying in posture um, with a cable machine or with bands or something like that and to try to mimic those movements. And so that's what I tell people, like that's the difference between just like general exercise and strength and conditioning and golf fitness, right? It's like, Yes, they still need to work on those same basic patterns, but they also need to work on those golf movement patterns. And that's kind of what makes it golf specific. And that's where the collaboration is awesome because like Kyle's right there. And so occasionally he'll see me like I'm showing them an exercise and he goes, no, no, no. I want them to like specifically do this because it becomes even more golfy. I'm like, that's fantastic, <laughs> right? Um, and then sometimes I'll see him working with a player and I go, no, 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 like their posture is not good. We need to work on that. And he goes, perfect. You show them their posture then, you know, and that's where the collaboration comes in with that. Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, being able to follow the golf room and, and Buckeye golf performance on Instagram. I've gotten to see some of the stuff you guys have been doing recently and you definitely are, are speaking to what you guys are doing. I saw the exercise you guys were doing. Uh, yesterday and today where you're kind of yeah. using the slide pads to help people load into that side and then rotate off of it. Uh, some really cool stuff and, and able to really be creative. Um, one of the things that I think you hear a lot, especially coming from golf professionals, coming from the college level is when you're a kid, just hit it as hard as you can and learn how to develop speed. So talk yeah. a little bit about some of the methods maybe in the gym that, that you guys are utilizing to help juniors develop that speed. Um, and and yeah. what that looks like as you're trying to work on just allowing kids to, to generate as much club head speed as possible when they're younger. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times just having them swing really fast is not always the best to do that over and over and over again, um, just because it can start to kind of wear on their bodies, you know, and that's when we'll start to see kids with back pain and things like that. So that's where, you know, the strengthening comes in as kind of that foundation. But from there, it's a lot of speed stuff. So we'll do speed drills where, whether it's reactive um, type things in the gym or um, ladder drills or different sprints, things like that, um, that are just working on speed and if you saw it you'd be like are these kids training for basketball are they training for football like you know golf what is it but it's really just really learning how to move fast um because that's what with golf like the golf club doesn't weigh very much right so it's not like you need a lot of like strength to actually move it you just need speed and so doing kind of that speed stuff certainly helps um, in the gym, but then having that strength foundation so that you can actually handle it. Um, we definitely use the, um, the super speed sticks. We love those. All of the kids know how to use those and the kind of the different, pr um, training protocols with those. 
for sure. Um, a lot of medicine ball stuff. Um, we've got the um, the speed chains. If you've seen those, it's literally just like a heavy chain. Um, so we'll use that to work on speed, ropes, you know, all that fun stuff. But and then always having some sort of competition, you know, where um, you know whether it's shuttle runs or different things where they have to pick up cones or things like that to just always kind of move quick and kind of react and change direction fast. Um, again, you could be training for soccer or basketball, or but it's just really learning how to move fast. And particularly with kids, those kind of speed windows, making sure we hit those so that they develop that. Definitely. Um, I think it's more of a, a long-term athletic approach as opposed to just specifically trying to train, train speed within the golf swing. Um, I think a lot of the times you see kids wind up getting overuse injuries and things like that because they're so focused on being in golf posture all the time and hitting so many golf balls and trying to swing as fast as they can in posture when really you're trying to, to train them just to be more athletic and to be able to develop that speed in other ways. Yeah, absolutely. And it's tough for, you know, some of the kids, they, particularly some of the boys, they don't develop as, as quickly as others. And so they're trying to, you know, keep up with, you know, you'll got, you have two 16 year old kids and one of them looks like they're, you know, a 25 year old man and the other one looks like they're 12 still, you know? And so obviously the one can hit it a lot further. And so how's the other one's going to keep up? Um, and so it's really kind of learning how to be like patient and kind of realize like your time is coming, <laughs> like you will get stronger, but you've got to be patient with it. Cause just trying to swing out of your shoes, you're, you know, your back's going to give in at some point, potentially. For so, sure. But. For sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, speaking of the injury side of things and, and kind of that side, talk a little bit about recovery, some of the things that you're doing with your athletes in terms of recovery, and then how much of that is actually going into the PT side of things for you as well. Yeah, our golfers are the most spoiled golfers <laughs> ever. <laughs> So they get, so I'll do cupping on them um, for recovery. I'll do instrument assisted, like the um, scraping, hot grips on them. Um, I do dry needling as, you know, part of the therapy. And so they all the time, Lindsay, can you scrape me? Lindsay, can you cut me? I mean, like, and it's great, you know, I mean, there's some of them who definitely get some sort of recovery soft, like actual hands-on soft tissue work, you know, once or twice a week, um, which if you were a professional golfer, you'd get that at least that, if not more. Um, but then they go to college and I'm like, well, when's the last time you've, you know, gotten any sort of soft tissue work? Oh, I haven't. I'm like, hmm, interesting. So you didn't realize how good you had it with me. Right. Um, but no, we definitely do that for, um, you know, the instrument assisted soft tissue stuff for just maintaining um, soft tissue mobility um, and pliability. Um, the cupping, like I said, the dry needling can help with recovery. Um, we do some foam rolling and then just learning how to use, um, you know, kind of the um, like tiger tails or the, um, you know, for soft tissue as well. So they do some of that for sure. Um, and basic stretching. And we encourage the kids to do stuff on their own as well, like stretching. Um, we've got some kids who go to yoga on their own and things like that um, to just keep mobile. Um, awesome. But we definitely talk to them about all of that because I think it's just as important as their training for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so for kids who don't have their trainer, who's also a PT, uh, <laughs> yeah. for those kids who, who aren't as lucky, what are some of the things you would recommend in terms of the foam rolling, the stretching, et cetera, what would kind of their recovery protocol look like? Yeah, so I think, you know, the foam rolling can be um, good to just kind of warm up a little bit, you know, if you're, um, you just kind of roll out a little bit. And then afterwards, it can help with some of that soreness. So whether it's foam rolling, whether it's, um, you know, using one of the massage sticks to kind of um, help with that, um, you know, those are all going to be in just some stretching, some kind of light stretching, static stretching at the end of a workout um, are all going to be things that are super important. But um, I mean, honestly, it, to be able to have the hands-on work and the kind of that specific work is awesome. So if kids are able to find someone who's able to do that, it's totally, it's worth it for sure. So definitely. Awesome. Uh, let's get into another area that I feel like is, is sometimes overlooked when it comes to golf and specifically junior golf, uh, looking a little bit more at the nutrition side of things. Uh, yeah. You guys are dealing with your athletes and dealing with your juniors. Uh, how much do you guys go into nutrition? What do you guys talk about nutrition? What are kind of some of your recommendations for those golfers who are in that stage where they're trying to, to grow and 
kind of grow into their bodies as well. So we, it's great because we literally just did this, um, so with this, or with our junior academy, so all of the kids for a week, they had to track, um, they keep, kept food logs of everything that they ate and drank. Um, and then each day they were supposed to calculate how much protein they had and how much water they had. And every kid they have like um, in their binders, they have like um, things where they know how to calculate how much protein they need, how much water they need. So like how much protein you need as a growing kid is if you take your body weight, right? So if you weigh like 150 pounds, you divide it by 2.2, that's gonna give you your weight in kilograms. And then you multiply that by 1.5. That's how much protein you need per day. And then with water, they need half their body weight in ounces at the very least, right? So if you weighed 150 pounds, you need 75 ounces at least with that. So they all know that. And then they track that um, for a week. And then we all sit down and we talk about it in small groups. And we say, okay, give us a sample day of, you know, how you, of what you ate um, and drank and kind of how were you able to calculate your protein? And they, you know, they have to look up on different apps or on Google of how much proteins in different foods. Um, And then in that small group, they give feedback of, you know, what did we think about that kid's day? Do we think um, you know, could they make better choices with their food or with their water? And it was interesting because a lot of times what they'd see is, you know, you'd have breakfast, but maybe you didn't have any very good protein sources for breakfast. Or, you know what, I drank all of my water after 4 p.m., you know, and so I showed up to my workouts actually pretty dehydrated. Or I don't, I eat lunch at, you know, 10.30 a.m. And then I come straight to academy and I don't have dinner until, 6 30 in the evening and that's like a long time and so kind of think trying to figure out strategies of all right you've only got five minutes to eat breakfast what are you going to have right or what are some easy things that you can have or what are some snacks that you can have um and we talk about the importance of protein so like why is protein even important so a lot of kids have this idea that and a lot of people in general that when you work out that you're building muscle and i'm like that's not true right when you work out you're actually breaking down muscle you're breaking apart muscle fiber and that's why you get sore and so you need need, then your body goes, oh gosh, so we need to like build that back up so I don't get hurt again. So you need that protein to help build that muscle back up. So if you're not eating, you're, if you're not eating very well, um, you're not getting enough protein, then you just did all that working out and then you're not going to build any bigger muscle. So like, what was the point? Um, same with water. There's lots of research that just even 1% of, um, uh, of dehydration, just being dehydrated 1%, 1% can have a significant impairment on your performance. So why would you do that? You're not going to be able to hit it as far. You might not be able to be as, um, you know, be able to last 18 holes. You're not going to be able to do your workouts, all that fun stuff, let alone school and academic stuff, of course. Um, And so making sure that they kind of understand it's not just about like us harping on you, like we're your mom, you know, it's like, this is how it's important for golf as well. Um, So it's kind of cool. They all keep it for a month or for a week. I'm sorry. They all keep a nutrition log for a week. We all discuss and then they each have two goals that they need to work on from that. And sometimes it's, you know, more protein. Sometimes it's more, you know, you need to eat some vegetables. Like you didn't have any vegetables. Um, And then we see if they can like actually achieve those goals. And we've had some kids, I mean, it's awesome. They'll say like, you know, Lindsay, I've lost 20 pounds. You know, like that's fantastic. Or, you know what? I was only drinking 30 ounces of water a day and now I'm drinking 80 ounces. Like I didn't even realize um, with that. Or just the fact that I had to write down something made me realize that like, man, that was a pretty crappy meal. So um, it's pretty cool. And then we do the same thing once it's in the spring and they're actually playing tournaments. We do the same thing for um, a tournament of what are you eating the night before? What are you eating the morning of, during a tournament, after a tournament for performance as well? So we talk about that a lot, which I don't think many um, people do with their junior golfers and I think is vitally important for sure. Definitely, yeah. Uh, one of the, the other questions I had, you touched on a little bit, but obviously on the course performance, um, I think yeah. that's overlooked by a lot of people, whether it's junior golfers or even most colleges don't necessarily have all the information that they probably should. Um, You're going to be out on the golf course for four to six hours. So what are some of your recommendations for on the course, whether that's uh, obviously drinking water, but maybe some good snacks that would be good for the golf course or 
even if you recommend eating like a sandwich or some sort of meal at the turn, like what would your recommendation be for players who are in the midst of, of a round trying to make sure they keep their body fueled properly? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, the time to test out foods is not during a tournament. It's during a <laughs> practice round, right? Because you don't know how your body's necessarily going to react, right? So you don't want to be like, all right, I'm going to have like some, you know, a ham and cheese sandwich, and then you feel like crap, you know? So, um, you know, you definitely want to try this during a practice round or during a, you know, a practice 18 holes. Um, but you need some sort of fuel because like you said, you're going to be out there for four or five hours. So particularly if you're particularly if you're sweating. Um, water's fantastic, but you also need to replenish electrolytes. So that means like sodium and potassium. So whether that's having some sort of sports drink that actually has those in, or it can be like pretzels with salt that's going to have sodium in it, or you know some sort of crackers. But then also some sort of protein. So whether it's peanut butter or whether it's some nuts or things like that um, to try to help out with that. So I recommend a lot of times like make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Have um, half of it on the first on the front nine. Have half of it on the back nine. Have like a little bag of pretzels or um, you know some crackers with peanut butter. Um, you know, people like fruit. So whether it's an apple or a banana or something like that, um, can all be helpful. But again, the time to try it is like during a practice round. And then when you finish, like you need to be able to have, you know, food afterwards because you just expended a lot of energy. And so, you know, being prepared to not just, you know, relying on whatever they have in the clubhouse of a hot dog or something. Um, you know, how are you going to get your protein and your carbohydrates to kind of replenish, particularly if you've got to play again tomorrow with that? Awesome. Uh, yeah, that was, that was really good. That was awesome. It's some good information too. Like I said, it's something that I think people don't often think about. Uh, I know for me as a coach, sometimes you'll hear a kid say like, oh, I don't play good when I eat or I don't play good when I drink. And I just want to like wind up smacking yourself in the forehead. She's like, what are you talking about? Um, right. And so, and I find a lot of times they, when they say that they mean like, well, I don't eat good. I don't play well when I eat like three hot dogs. Like no <laughs> kidding. Right? Like you probably feel super full. So you need to figure out something that you can eat where you don't feel full and tired, but you're still like replenishing your muscles and replenishing, um, you know, your body because you are expending energy. Definitely. Uh, another thing that, that I wanted to try to touch on a little bit uh, is like in season versus off season training. Uh, so mm -hmm. over the course of, of like a year, do you guys typically run phases or cycles or how do you guys kind of have the workout program set up for a player uh, specifically when you're looking at their in season times versus their out of season times? Yeah, absolutely. So right now it's nice. I mean, I think we're actually kind of an advantage of being in the North from the standpoint of like, you can't be playing golf right now. I mean, it, I think it's like five degrees out. <laughs> um, and so it really gives us a chance to one kind of shut them down from a golf standpoint. Yes, they're doing drills in the academy and things like that. Um, but they're not going out and just, you know, playing 18 holes every day. Um, and it also gives us a chance in the gym to really put on some muscle and put on some strength. And like, I don't really care if you're sore tomorrow because you don't have to play golf, right? Um, but once we're actually in season, then we've got to kind of um, dial back a little bit um, what we're doing with workouts. I think it's important to still work out, um, but maybe not as heavy of loads because, again, you're, you're actually out playing more, you're practicing more, you've got a tournament tomorrow. It's not going to be beneficial if you're sore, you know, and your muscles feel tight because then you're not going to be able to, you know, swing fluidly. Um, so when we... Once, you know, spring hits and then certainly summer when there's a lot of tournaments, um, we'll kind of dial back um, the intensity of the workouts. Um, so just from a, a soreness standpoint um, and really trying to maintain things um, that we did over the winter, uh, still working on some of the speed and the fundamentals and stability and then working on recovery a lot more with that. Um, once they get into high school golf, like actually in the fall season, it's really challenging because those, um, I don't know if it's the same way kind of where you are, but they go, I mean, they'll play, uh, they'll go to school all day and then they'll play nine or 18 holes. And it's just almost like every day. I mean, it's crazy. And so for them to get workouts in is challenging. Um, but we kind of do our best, to, again, just more of the recovery and let's move and, um, kind of keep your muscles um, maintaining what we've worked on so that you don't lose anything. But it really goes from more from a, this is a building and let's build muscle and get stronger and get faster phase to more of like a maintenance phase once tournament season really kicks in. 
Awesome. Uh, that's really cool. And I think it's, it's important too, just to kind of know the difference. I think a lot of times, um, maybe you'll see like the social media side of some of the professional golfers and see them really lifting heavy. And it seems like they're doing it all the time when really they're not, that's not the, the majority part of their workout. Um, right. But and you and you've got to know for yourself. So there's some professional golfers I know who they actually play better when they're a little sore because they tend to have kind of loose swings where they get a little long with it. And so if they're a little sore, it actually kind of tightens them up a little bit and stabilizes them. So they actually like that, but they know that and they've practiced that. Um, they don't just say, "Hey, I think I'm going to lift heavy before a tournament," you know, without knowing the kind of how they're going to play or the consequences. Definitely. Yeah. I think one of the most important things is, is just to know your body and to have a plan to make sure that you keep it as consistent as possible. You don't want to kind of be yo-yoing through your season and, and feeling different ways for each event. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you talk to the pros, I mean, it's almost their schedule's kind of boring because they do the same thing for every, you know, if it's a tournament week where they're actually playing or if it's an off week, I mean, the schedule's about the same. You know, they have, all right, if I'm, uh, if it's tournament week, I'm going to try to get two workouts in, you know, in the gym, they're still doing their warm ups and their cool downs every day, but I'm going to try to get in two workouts versus if it's an off week, maybe I'm going to get three or four workouts in. Um, but knowing that, and that's kind of true every single week. Um, and they know, they know how they're going to respond to that. Uh, I think one of the, the really cool things that I would like to hear more about personally is uh, some of the, the stuff that you've gotten to do with some professional golfers in your career. Um, I know you, had, you were able to do some work with the 2013 President's Cups team. Um, talk a little bit about that experience and, and what you were kind of able to do with the team. Yeah, so um, so besides at the golf room, I also work at Muirfield Village, um, where the President's Cup was in 2013. It's also the Memorial um, Tournament every year. Um, and so with that, um, one of the players that I was um, working with mainly at that time was Jason Day, who, so I was actually kind of a team trainer, but for the international team. <laughs> um, so, which kind of is weird that you're like, woohoo, the international team, but I'm American. Um, <laughs> But I mean, that was, it's a crazy experience with how many people are there and, um, you know, they build a whole new media center and they just, I mean, the, there's so many more stands that are up, you know, for spectators and that many more people compared to a regular tournament. Um, but, and then there's only, you know, 24 golfers, you know, cause there's only 12 on each team. So you've got all these more people for a smaller field for sure. Um, that week was crazy because it poured down rain, not just rained, but like poured, poured, poured down rain. Um, so we were all just like miserable, you know, wet, but, um, I would say, so a couple of things were kind of cool with that. Um, you know, first one, so during the practice rounds, you know, I was kind of like walking um, and I would kind of walk outside the ropes and coming down 18 during the practice round, Jason was like, why are you walking outside the ropes? Like, why don't you walk down the fairway with me? And I was like, uh, okay. Um, and so walking down the fairway and there's all these people for this practice round. And it was crazy how many people were like texting me like, Hey, I saw you walking down 18. And I was like, well, you know, kind of a big deal. Um, but it, that, so that was kind of cool just to kind of be part of that. Um, but then the other thing was, so, you know, you're in the, in the um, fitness center when they're all warming up and you've got again golfers from all over the world um, here and so and they're all kind of warming up about at the same time since there's not that many tea times and you look around and like they were all kind of doing similar warm-ups even though they're very different you know people we had like um you know ernie l's versus um I'm trying to think who would be like on the American, um, like Phil versus, um, like Jordan Spieth, like, you know, very different body types, very different types of players. And they're all kind of very, doing very similar warmups, which is really cool to see. Um, one of the things that we have a lot, our golfers always do are like the rolling. So like lying on your back and like being able to roll onto your stomach or on your stomach, rolling to your back, using just your arms or just your legs like every golfer was doing that as part of their warm up. All of them are doing things with bands. All of them are, um, you know, doing stuff to get their hips kind of um, 
loose and get their glutes working and all that fun stuff. Um, and so one, it's kind of cool to see like all of them do a warm up, which I always, that's one of the things I always preach to our, um, to any of my players, like, listen, if the pro golfers need to do like a 20 minute plus warm up, like you and I certainly need to do a warm up, you know, <laughs> like we're not near as good as them. Um, so that's one thing, but then, um, just to see that they all kind of do similar things and none of them are that fancy. Like everyone's like, Oh, what are the golfers? What do the pro golfers do? And you're like kind of the same thing as you and I do like for a warm up or in the gym, they just do it better, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but that was really cool to kind of see that, of, you know, all of them kind of doing similar things, but, um, yeah, that was, that was an awesome experience. The international team did not win. They have not won <laughs> a president's cup in quite a while. Um, but it was, it was still pretty awesome to be a part of for sure. Moving on in the show now, we're to a part that, that we like to do a little bit more fun. Um, okay. We like to call it our twilight nine. So it's similar to just playing nine holes on a summer's evening, trying to, to get through nine holes as fast as you can, trying to beat the sun. So I'm going to ask you nine questions, kind of rapid fire. Just first thing that comes in your mind, just go ahead and, and blurt it out and we'll go on to the next one. Sound good? Okay. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, lowest score on the golf course. Oh, me? Okay. I don't keep score on the golf course. That's a perfect um, answer. Nope. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's fun for me completely. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, go to pre-round or pre-workout meal. For myself or yep. for anyone? For you. For, for me. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't know. My favorite food is chips and salsa, which is not actually the best thing to eat, but that's probably... <laughs> <laughs> yeah Fair and enough. probably some sort of caffeine and water <laughs> nice nice uh favorite on course snack or like snack that you eat just around the gym um my favorite with that um I like peanut butter crackers actually a lot perfect uh what's your pre-gym pump up song at the moment what gets you going um I was told by my juniors that I like mom music which is just really <laughs> mean <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um, so I'm always a fan of like Van Halen and, you know, something like that. Nice. Um, I'm a big fan of Bo Post Malone right now, which I think tries to make me not mom music. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <Yeah. laughs> uh, what's the hardest or your least favorite exercise to do in the gym for you personally? Oh, I am, this is going to be embarrassing, but I hate doing push-ups. like really <laughs> hate it. And they, all of my juniors know that. And so anytime they like try to bet me, they're like, all right, you're going to have to do 20 push-ups." I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> I hate them. So there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, all right. So you get to the course, uh, you're running a little bit late for your tea time. You only have five minutes to warm up as the pr fitness professional. What do you do or what do you recommend that somebody would do in that situation? Um, so with that, I do, honestly, I'll do like a couple like squats and lunges and then a couple, um, like jumping jacks. Cause I just like to have my heart rate up and kind of like moving, be loose with that. Um, and then take a couple practice swings and then go, um, awesome. but I always try to do some sort of like movement, get your heart rate up for sure. Definitely. Uh, what's your golf brand of choice? Um, so I will say Titleist, but I'm actually playing with TaylorMade clubs right now. Okay. Uh, I know. That's so bad. <laughs> no, I love TaylorMade, actually. So. Awesome. Uh, what's the best movie of all time? The best movie of all time or the best golf movie? The best, the best movie of all time. Okay. The best movie of all time is Mean Girls, obviously. <laughs> uh, best golf movie of all time is Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and yeah. then what's your favorite sports team? Uh, my favorite sports team is Ohio State, Buckeyes. Awesome. Uh, well, that's our Twilight Nine, just a fun little section that we like to do to kind of get to know you a little bit better, uh, provide a little bit of entertainment as well. Uh, real quick before we let you go, just a couple more questions to kind of hammer home some points to the guests, uh, really be able to kind of learn more and, and have some takeaways from junior golf. So talk a little bit just about how early juniors should get involved in fitness and finding a trainer and kind of getting involved in, in doing some stuff that's going to help uh, lead to athletic development? 
Yeah, so I think when um, kids are really young, even you know when they're in elementary school, um, I think it's super important to be involved in um, multiple different sports and just kind of have that well-rounded athletic, um, you know, kind of foundation. Um, and if you are doing, you know, some you know golf things, um, that there are are some just kind of athletic activities. But um, I think it's really when the kids start to get more of like the junior high, whether it's 11, 12, 13 years old, um, that start kind of doing some stuff in the gym with, um, with weights and cables and things like that. I think it's important to find someone who works with kids um, from a training standpoint. Um, there's a lot of trainers who um, incorrectly treat children as just like small adults and they're definitely not small adults. They um, have kind of their own special considerations and needs um, when, when training a junior. And so making sure that that um, fitness trainer actually understands that. Um, but there's definitely things that they can be doing in the gym of like learning just foundational movement patterns so that when they actually are developed um, enough and you know have gone through puberty that they can actually start uh, lifting weights and they have good correct form. Um, and then also they can be working on some of those movement patterns that they need for golf, but actually in the gym, which actually is a lot easier for juniors, um, you know, to be able to handle a medicine ball or a, a resistance band as opposed to a golf club that can still feel kind of out of control in the swing when they're still kind of growing. Um, but once they're in high school, I think it's really important to actually be in the gym. If you have a goal of playing collegiate golf, you will be working out in college. Uh, and so if you're able to enter your college freshman year, you know, with, you already have the demands of school, which are going to, was going to be new with college. You're going to have, you know, um, qualifying and tournaments for golf, and then you're going to be working out. And if you've never worked out before, and then you're just sore, you're going to be miserable. It's going to be hard to do qualifying. You're just, it's, you're going to be so much better off if you've already been working out and you're kind of ahead of the game. Um, it's pretty cool. A lot of our juniors, when they go off to college, um, you know, the trainers that work with them are just like, wow, like, the stuff you're doing, like you're already really good at this, at this stuff. And they're like, yeah, we've been doing this already, you know, and they feel like they're already kind of a captain, even though they're a freshman, just really gives you some confidence for sure. Um, awesome. So I think it's vitally important um, in that high school age. Yeah, definitely. No, that's so cool. Uh, I really appreciate you joining us today. Real quick, let the listeners know where they can follow along with you, where they can see some of the stuff that, that you guys are doing. Yeah, so the website is um, BuckeyePerformanceGolf.com. Um, if you get on Instagram, uh, it is Buckeye Performance Golf. Uh, my personal Instagram is LC uh, Becker. Uh, Elsie Becker. Um, so you'll see a lot of, you know, kind of both with that. Um, Facebook page, we've got Buckeye Performance Golf. Um, Twitter is Buckeye Lins, um, like Buckeye Lindsay, but Buckeye Lins. Um, there's a Buckeye theme, obviously. Um, wow. What an episode. I cannot thank Lindsay enough for coming on. That was so much fun. We had a ton of fun. She had me laughing the whole time, uh, but she also gave a lot of really good information about junior golf fitness training. I really am excited for the things that she's able to do with Buckeye Golf Performance and the setup that they have over at the golf room. If you're ever over in the Columbus or Dublin area, please swing by and check it out. They have a great staff. Uh, they've been really awesome to me and have really been a pleasure to have on the show. So once again, want to give a huge shout out to Lindsay. Make sure to follow her on social medias. All of her links will be down below as well as the link to uh, the Buckeye Golf performance website so go show her some love let her know that you came from making the turn really once again just want to thank you guys for the support if you like this video if you like the podcast please leave me some feedback some comments let me know really can't wait to continue to come out with some really exciting episodes moving forward uh, we also have started the golfers in the gym series uh, we're partnering with asbel golf performance uh, and it's a really cool series where we talk about how to have your body move properly and some of the side effects that you may be seeing in your golf swing if your body's not moving properly so go check those videos out too they're very short it's a very fun series as well want to thank you guys once again so much for the support can't wait to continue to bring you guys new content and new episodes so really look forward to seeing you guys again next wednesday for episode nine of making the turn this is Vince Drum and Golf, and I'm out.